What's up, guys? Welcome back to the rating climb. We're going to go for 1800 today, maybe even a little bit further because we're already almost there. So, D4. What am I going to play against D4? Something different. Now, let's just play D5. I'm not going to go overthinking it. I'm going to play the Queen's Gambit accepted. He plays E4. Interesting. Um,. I think I want to play knight f6 and just start attacking this right away. Of course, if the pawn pushes, I'm going to jump to d5. And knight c3 is what I'm expecting. I'm probably going to play e6. I like. I just have the same setup that I usually play against the queen's gambit pretty much every time. Because so I know it's pretty solid and I don't have to think about theory and whatnot. Um, a6, we're going to try to play b5. Here we go. Go ahead and play b5. And I am going to ask myself, what happens if I attack the knight? Can I win a pawn? So um, let's think about this. Where is the knight going to move? Let's just say it moves here. Take the pawn. Is there some tactic that I'm missing? Or if the knight moves over here, is there some tactic that I'm missing? I don't think so. So this looks like I might just be able to win a pawn. We'll play b4. I'm going to double check it after the knight moves again, um, but this is a safe move to go ahead and play. Ah, oh, he plays e5. Interesting. So I take, they take, I take. If they take me, I'm going to get the queen first, uh, but they would be able to take here. So it is kind of an interesting line. Let's say we take, we take, they take me. We actually might have a double queen situation. Hmm. One of the kids just got hurt. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this. I don't really know what's happening. I think my wife has it under control. All right, let's think about this. We could take, take back. I'm really interested in this line where we, we both just get a queen. What happens in that scenario? It might be worse for me because my king is right here. But what I might do is just take and take back and then just castle and attack this pawn. Probably the best thing to do. Does this make any sense at all? If they take, I would take with check. King moves, I get a queen. That's going to be pretty similar. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. And I guess we're just going to take back here. Really felt like I should have had something better, but I'm just not seeing what it is. We get a queen here. It's not gonna be good enough here. Super interesting position, but doesn't look like it's good enough for me. I do have check. Bishop can block though. Yeah, I'm because I'm afraid of like things like this happening with a queen bishop. Okay. Probably need to just go with what I said. Just take it. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I have anything better. At least we get an interesting position. So this is an isolated pawn. We can castle. A little bit exposed, although the bishop does a fairly nice job defending the king. Um, I could also wait and uh, go ahead and get the bishop here. E5 is not an option. Yeah, I think I do want to play bishop here and go ahead and get control of that diagonal. Hey, gifted five memberships. Thank you, Camille. Appreciate that. So do you guys automatically get the uh, the membership or do you have to type? Like, do you have to type something in? 
because I've seen some people typing like claim. I, I was wondering if that's actually a thing. Oh, you need gifts on. Uh, okay, and then it does it automatically. That's cool. Okay, so he goes ahead and castles. I'm now. I'm actually thinking about changing my strategy instead of castling myself. What if I play rook g8? Use the open rook, open g file to attack. It's risky because my king's going to still be in the center. Hmm. So we can castle, we can play there, or we can just maybe develop the knight. But what's my follow-up going to be? That's the, the question. Queen f6. Knight goes here. Do I castle this way? Do I just leave my king in the center? This is such a tough position to play. All right. Hmm. I'm thinking about queen f6 just because it immediately puts pressure on the knight. And I could go here. Do I have any tactics? Maybe I could start with this move. All right, let's go ahead and start here. Just get the pieces off the back. I'm still debating. I, I don't know which move here or even queen f6. Ship to a3. Okay, probably a good move. Uh, he wants to play d5, most likely. There's no more pin on the bishop. I can't castle now, so I see that. Okay. I'm still thinking queen f6 now, because then it gives me the option to go here if I need to. Also starts putting pressure on white, as well as this pawn. If this happens, I think I can grab the rook. Although queen e2, I don't know what's happening there. The other thing I could do is just push by. I don't actually have to allow that to get opened up, which might be the safe thing to do. Here's what I'm thinking. d5 takes queen e2. What do I play at that point? It's a very dangerous position to be in. My queen being attacked. All right, let's go queen of six. And I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards maybe e5. I think it's too dangerous to allow the uh, my king to be just opened up like that. He has double my time. Well, yeah, that's because he's moving every move in like five seconds. So that's going to happen. Okay. So d5, what else do we have as an option? I can just castle, allow this capture, move my knight forward. Like a very interesting line, actually. I might do that. Once my king's out of the center, this doesn't really bother me. Actually, I would be happy because it gives me the option for some tactics on the queen. Bishop a4. Okay. Interesting. So now I'm actually thinking, what if I just trade or play rook g8? Still castling. If I trade, I guess... White trades queens. I'm pretty happy. I'm going to take this, and that looks great. If white doesn't, still going to take that. I think. Yeah, I like I like the trade here. If they take here first, does that bother me? Not really. So what I'm trying to do is simplify um, and go into an endgame where I just win this pawn, and then I have an endgame up a pawn, essentially. And it looks like I can do that. Now, it's possible that I missed some crazy tactic, but... From a quick calculation, it looks like this should be fine. Okay, we can take that. 
Queen a4 doesn't do anything because we can block, so white has to recapture here. And yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm very happy with this. And I think, let's see, can we take it right away? The rook comes over, I defend, there's the bishop c5 is the move. Maybe I can't win a pawn just yet. Hmm. I thought I could. Like I can't. Hey, Bill. Welcome to Stalematers. Okay. He's going to move his king. And then what am I going to do? Rook b8. Get the file over here. I'm just gonna wait right now. It's too dangerous, and I don't actually win a pawn. But it's still a weak. It's still a weak pawn. So we're gonna keep an eye on that, and maybe I'm thinking bring the rook up. What this does is it blockades it, but it also gives me potentially some attacking ideas. Okay, well, that's, that's a move, I guess. Let's go here. This is a dangerous pin, so I do have to be careful. I might actually just try to go here. Yeah, we can't let them double up, or we just lose a piece. We have to do this. But on rook g1, we have bishop f6, which gets me out of that uh, jam. Still have, when you look at the pawn structure, every single one of white's pawns is kind of weak. So h4, it's probably a good move. Because he fixes his pawn structure. Yeah, it's a good move, I think. Although, I do have a double attack, so how does white save the pawn? I don't know if they can, so maybe we just want a pawn. Yeah, I think we're doing okay. We just got to watch the time, but it's going to start getting easier if we keep winning some pawns. Okay. And white's king is cut off, which is very nice. My king is not, so I can do whatever I want, basically, with the king. But yeah, this is much better for us. Still still got a, some work to do, though, to, uh, to finish off the game. I'm trying to just keep white's pieces tied up here. So I don't want the rook to be able to run away. So that's what I'm doing here. Also, don't want the king to get to be able to escape. Hmm. Yeah, I really value this. I almost moved up, but I, I really don't want to let the king into the game. Okay, this is going to be a trade. This pawn for this pawn. And I think I think I'm going to start pushing this pawn. Let me see if I can keep the king out. Yeah, I'm going to use it as a shield to get my king up here. And then I 
We'll see what happens. Go ahead, rook behind the pass pawn is generally where you want it to be. Gonna work these up the board. I just can't go here because of the tactic, but I don't have to. So we sack the rook, we get the queen. Um, or we can trade pawns. Okay, yeah, this is just fine. All right. It was a good game. Let's check the game review. I think our opponent played pretty well. Yeah, so not a bad game from either side. Let's check quickly. Update the wins here. 1799. So I'm curious. Oh, okay. So I, I thought... Uh, this was actually winning a pawn, but it's not it's not the case because of the movie E5. Very interesting. Hey, thank you, Bill. Thanks for your videos. They're so helpful. Awesome. Appreciate you. Thank you. So, yeah, let's see. I guess it was what happened in the game. Um, E5, and then, yeah, white actually can just get away with this. So takes, takes. Best move was bishop takes G7. Yeah, because if we... This is what I was afraid of. If we go for this double queen thing... The problem is white still has a very nice, you know, way to keep their king safe. They just castle. But I am, what am I going to do, right? If this bishop ever comes over here, the knight comes in, two queens, when, you know, when your king is not safe, not good. Not good. So that's why I decided to bail on that and just take it. Okay. Yeah, so this is very this is a very dangerous position to be in. This was a good move by our opponent. It's dangerous because it essentially takes out both of my pieces with one move. Right? Like I can't move the bishop because I lose my rook. I can't move the rook away or I lose the bishop. So both of these pieces are kind of pinned in a sense. So that was a very powerful move. Now luckily for me, the rest of my position is very solid. There wasn't a way for, you know, white to immediately take advantage of that. Like by somehow attacking this with, you know, the bishop or something. Um, but that's, you do have to watch out for things like this. That could have been very dangerous. And what my opponent was trying to do here was set up double rooks. And that would have been bad. I'm going to get to the end game here, see if there was anything that we missed. So right here, um, Hey, Two Hawks, welcome to Stalematers. Appreciate you. Um, so right here, you have to be careful, because if I would have made a move like, you know, here, trying to escort my pawn down, the rook's coming over with check, and then white gets the queen, right? So that's why what I did was constantly kept it behind the pawn until I had advanced it far enough, right? And then eventually, I don't know why that was a blunder, um, here, I was okay with this because now it's different because now check, which we saw in the game, 
at the end of everything, I'm able to just get a queen. Now, what white could have done is go right here. Um, but what I was going to do was trade these pawns, take here, and this is actually going to be a winning endgame for me. And probably the easiest thing to do would have been to play rook here. Cut off the king, totally cut off the king, so that it can't chase my pawn down. And now I just escort my, my pawn with my king. So, I don't know, let's say white does something like this. I can just go here, and I'm just going to start pushing this down. And there's not really a way that the rook can stop me. Um, to come down from behind would be one thing. So let's say like this. But eventually, I'm going to be able to do something like this. Sorry, not that. This and this. Okay, and check. Eventually, I can get out. Now, this is what's called the Lucena position. So sometimes what you will have to do, if white just keeps checking you like this, is what's called building a bridge. So you use your rook essentially as a shield. So it would look something like this. Um, eventually you could go like this. And when the rook keeps checking you, you block with the rook. I feel like I did a terrible job of explaining that. But essentially you use the rook as a shield to get out of the checks and then there's nothing for white to do and you get a queen. The important thing though is that white's king was, was cut off. Imagine if white's king was sitting over here in front of my pawn. There's no way I'm gonna be able to win. So that was important, going all the way back to this position, way back here, that was something that I was thinking about. I was like, okay, if I go for this trade, takes, 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 I saw that I was gonna have time to cut off the king, like this. And that's important in the position, right? All right, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's play another game. Um, and we'll be over 1800. My favorite gambit of all time oh, good question there's so many good ones i used to like the king's gambit for a long time um but now i kind of i don't like some other ones i don't know what my favorite is that's a really good question bishop's opening has a lot of cool ones um i don't even remember what's the name what's the let me see what's the name of that one i don't even remember the name of this one that i play all the time against the Karakon. what is it called this one, bishop c4. Von Hennig Gambit. Von Hennig Gambit. Yeah, that's probably my favorite one right now. All right, here we go. New 10 minute game. All right, folks. Oh. Didn't want to play Peter Potzer. All right. Can't blame him. Your favorite is the rice cooker gambit? Yeah, that's a good one, too. All right, let's play. Hmm. Did I play some? I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll go with this. I don't know. I'm a little bit indecisive today. I don't know why. Hard time making decisions here. All right, let's go back to a, an Italian game. See what Black's going to do. Okay, let's let's um, let's go for a fried liver if Black's going to let us. Yeah, D5. Expected that. Let's see if they how much of this line they know. Okay. We'll just stick with the main line for right now. This should be five. Oh, this is what the person played last time. And I think we played queen e2, which was a good move. I remember that. And then I think they played bishop d6. What did I play in that game? It worked, it worked out really well. What did I play? Yeah. It's the same thing, right? Why can't I remember what I played? Oh, I played knight c3, didn't I? I played knight c3. I think I was just like defending. and then I remember we had like... How did that game go? Remember the king like somehow came up here and we had like checkmate? How did that happen? Oh, they took here. They, they took here, which was a mistake, I think, and then we were able to throw that in. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, okay, it's coming back to me. But I'm expecting we're not going to see that. I think we're going to see castles this game. Probably castling, yeah. 
and So I'm just, I mean, I'm just looking around, I'm looking at trading, I'm looking at the fact that the knight is undefended, I'm, do I have any tactics to take advantage of that? I'm looking at, I would love to play queen here and checkmate, but I can't because the knight's here, can I make the knight move? Nah, maybe, not really, he's going to take me, probably not ideal. I'm looking at the fact that this is undefended, so I have to keep an eye on that, but I do have the bishop, so just like getting a general sense of the, of the position. Thank you, Bill. Gifted five memberships. All right. Appreciate that. Okay, okay. Like, I'm also thinking about the knight is almost trapped, right? Like, it can't go anywhere. So if I could play b4, I could trap the knight. I just can't because of the bishop. But this is all the stuff that I'm that I'm trying to, like, think through. So I might just castle. d3 actually looks like a good move, though, too. Although then this, I have to recapture with the knight, which is not a big deal. But then I lose the pawn. Yeah, so maybe I do trade. Play d3. Because I want this to be defended. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I'm going to trade that and play d3, I think. Um, I'm just trying to get a clamp on the e4 square and also defend my knight. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's the right approach in this position, but it seems like it's there's nothing wrong with it, so we'll play that. And the only reason I pre-moved this was because it was a pretty safe pre-move, regardless of how black recaptured I was going to want to do this defend my knight in that case or in this case just to take control over these squares and let my bishop out so i pretty much knew i wanted to do that i'm still not sure which way i'm going to castle i'm leaving that open king side is obviously easier but i could very quickly do this as well so let's see what black's going to do i have a mat on the floor uh it's like a the chair to roll on but it's it's not centered right now one second okay so much better i was like sliding off of it okay uh so he's trying to take the knight take the pawn makes a lot of sense bishop d2 is what i'm thinking immediately because it breaks the pin if takes, takes, then maybe I can take here, maybe not. But if the knight moves queen h5, there's h6. I guess it's not good enough. Ah, but there's also... Is there a tactic where I can sacrifice that? Check, no, because the knight, no, it doesn't work. Okay. So we just get the king out of the center. That's an option too. Mm-hmm. Let's play bishop d2. Again, keeping my options open, I could still go either way. Takes, takes, takes is probably a terrible idea because I'm going to get forked, but also I'm going to get double pinned. So instead... I might take back with the pawn, which is maybe kind of counterintuitive, like, why would I double my pawns like that and give myself an isolated pawn? But it has to do with the... Oh, but I'm attacking the knight. I just saw that. Hold on. Hold everything. Hold everything. What I was going to say is, this way, when the knight comes in, I could play c4, and that's really good. Which is true, but this it attacks the knight immediately. How does the knight... The knight's trapped, so that black has to do something like this to defend it? Or b6. You play b6. If the queen comes out, I have b4. I'm going to get really tricky. Um, 
This also, though, threatens c4. Okay, I am going to take this way. Um, both moves look pretty good, but I, what I'm thinking is I'm going to be able to hold onto this pawn, which might be really annoying for black, because if they take it, I think I have c4 and I'm winning a piece. Take with the queen. Um, of course we can't take this. That's not even a consideration. But c4 takes. The knight is no longer trapped, but can't do that. We have to go here first. No, we can't. Okay. All right. I guess I have to castle now. I, I don't think I can put that off any longer. Okay. But now we are threatening, I think, c4, which is a very dangerous move for black. But the, yeah, they have time to deal with it. Okay, and they do. So, interesting position. Um, let's go ahead and play... Let's go ahead and put the rook here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to play knight to e4, knight to f3, rook to b1 after maybe c4. Maybe I could try to put the bishop here. Looks like a pretty good diagonal, but the queen might come up. No, then we have knight f3. There, there's a lot of things happening. I don't exactly know. Okay, well, that makes it easy. We have to move the knight. I could throw in c4 first. Because if the queen moves here, I could gain a tempo. Hmm, I kind of like the look of that, actually. Just going ahead. But then I have to worry about this move. Or we just go here. Yeah. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go here. Because the reason I'm doing this, I didn't want to go back here and allow this to happen. And then the rook comes over and... I get into trouble. This way, I feel like I'm not getting into trouble. Okay. Probably this way. Yes, there's f5. But... I don't think I'm concerned about that. Let me play rook b1. I want to see how black's going to deal with this, because if they play a move like b6... Then maybe this becomes an option in some cases. Yeah, maybe I can do something like this. Now there's going to be rook d6. Maybe not at the moment, but I'm going to keep an eye on that. I am going to keep an eye on that. Thinking about playing c4 because I want to get this bishop like in a better place. Opens up d4, but... I think I'm willing to, to uh, deal with that, rook b2. And then this is going to be weak, and then we can follow up like this. I think this is a good plan. Rook g4, bishop takes h6. Yeah, you could do that, but that's an easy threat to deal with. And black, yeah, black was probably going to play a move like f5 anyway, and so... Okay. Let's go all the way back here. Just want to keep the pressure here. I don't want to go to here and get forked. So, seems like the... Hmm, good move. That's a good move by our opponent, I think. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Okay. Bishop f4, we counterattack. We at least get something out of the, the deal. That's what I'm thinking. I missed that one. I guess I can play rook b3 and try to defend, but I don't think it's good enough. I want to do something more aggressive. Also, this take, 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 takes. I can't go there because of that. Yeah, let's let's go for this. Trying to at least trade pawns and not lose everything. And I do have to keep an eye on the back rank. Notice I don't have an escape square for my king, right? I don't have any uh, places to go. So something to keep an eye on as the game progresses.
and black makes an interesting decision to defend the pawn. So now I'm wondering, can I just take it and take it? Yes, my pawns are messed up, but I'm up a pawn, and I can probably trade some of these off at some point, so it might not be as bad as it looks. Okay, uh, interesting. Did not see that one either. Wow. Hmm. So he wants to trap the bishop. Um... If I go here, I won't be able to take it because of this, but I could come over here. Very interesting. Got to go faster now. Um, it's just a tricky position. I'm trying not to blunder something. Yeah, okay, so he takes that. I got to fix the back rank problem. I do want to trade some pawns off at some point, too. What's the priority right now? What is the priority? Maybe fixing the back rank problem. So I'm going to go here. It also gives me the option to use my king to hunt down this pawn. Assuming we get some trades, which is kind of what I'm suspecting here pretty soon. Um, let's go ahead. Now's the time to get rid of that pawn. Knight here. I think we can play h3 safely and then take back. Okay. Let's make sure there's no crazy tactics. No, looks like everything is good. Cause I have rookie two. See two. It's going to defend this. And now we're in good shape, I think. That's not a good move. Uh, we'll take it. We will take it. We'll go here and take this guy next, because we have our king to help. And up a pawn somehow. He might up a pawn after all that. All right. So create a pass pawn and then use that pawn as a decoy. This is the technique. Use that pawn as a decoy. Let's blockade these guys. Um, we'll just go here. Just go here. If, if these pawns weren't here, I would just keep pushing this a little bit. And at some point, I would probably just come over here and take these. It would be one, one easy way to do it. The other way would be stalemate the king, essentially, and then force black to push the pawn. But since we have two pawns, it's e easier. So this is normally a big mistake, a stalemate, but in this case, it's not because I have one, two, three, and it's actually going to be checkmate. So just an alternate way to do it. Okay, good game to our opponents. They played very well early on, I think, and then uh, kind of fell apart at the end. Yeah, pretty. we're, we're seeing some pretty consistent 80... 80 accuracies, which makes a lot of sense, I think, this level. All right. So we got 1,800. Let's briefly check the game here. D3 is not the move. Let's see what it is. It's, it's all pretty similar. I'm supposed to castle, though, just to get out of the center. 
did want bishop takes. So I was I wasn't sure what was happening after like queen takes or queen over here. Um eighty four, yeah, I guess this was a little bit better. Okay. Okay. No, so it was it was played pretty well. There wasn't any big mistakes anywhere. Here black just kinda started trying to flag me, I think, and you can't really by the way, if you're playing this as black and you are trying to flag someone, never trade rooks. Never trade rooks in a rook and pawn endgame because that just makes it easy, right? That just made it super easy for me. I'm like, I have three against two. I push it. I get a pass pawn. I, I don't even have to really think about anything. You keep the rook on the board. You know, you move here and you try to be annoying. You come down here and you come over here and you start pushing your pawns and you keep jumping around with your rook and you check my king and you just, it just, it's going to take me a lot longer and it's going to be much more difficult to win. So just keep that in mind. If you are going to try to win on time, keep a rook on the board. Much more difficult. Hey, Fisher, thank you. Appreciate that. So, but yeah, after they traded, it was, it was very straightforward. And like I said, um, you want to look, if you're ahead, okay, you want to look where is your pawn majority. So here it is, three against two. And you want to create a pass pawn as quickly as you can. And use that pawn a lot of times as a decoy. So that's what we saw here. This pawn has to be guarded by the king. That king cannot ever just leave. Because if you do, you just push it and get a queen. So black's king is stuck here. So that's valuable, and eventually you just get a situation like this where it has to go backwards, and you can just pick off the pawn there. It could have also, you know, went over here and started taking these. That's another way to do it. Um, but yeah, so hope that makes sense. We got 1,800, and um, I'm going to go get ready for lunch and stretch my legs and all that good stuff. So thank you guys. Appreciate everyone. Let me read chat for a minute before I go. Questions. Chess Adventure Series. It is, it is coming back. I promise you it's coming back one day. King's Gambit next time. Thanks, Gary. Did you play cheaters today? No, I don't I don't think I played any cheaters today. <laughs> Do I have a guide for King Rook and Pawn Endgames? Yes, yes, there's a video on the channel. Yep. It's like Rook Endings or something like that. Rook and Pawn Endings, but yes. Go watch that one if you want. You just got here, streams ending. Yeah, sorry. Celery for lunch. Not a bad idea. I do have it in the fridge. I might do that. <laughs> Title Tuesday for tomorrow? No, probably not. I'm not ready for Title Tuesday yet. It's a bit stressful. Rice for lunch? <laughs> no, not rice. <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy. See you next time. Appreciate everybody for the uh, the new members. Almost almost had fifty. Hey Rob, take it easy. All right, peace. See you guys next time. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.